In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the REST API and how that can be integrated together with the admin UI and the command line interface, which we've shown you in some other startup videos. Here I have the web UI and I have loaded the sample configuration which you can download from the customer portal. With this now, I'll begin using the REST API. The first thing I want to show you is that I can get all of the configuration with one call to the REST API. When I log in, I'm going to use the same uh, credentials that I do on the CLI and the admin UI, and those can be set in Postman uh, using the Authorize um, tab here, saying basic authentication, entering your username and password, and updating the request. And so that will set the authorization header. You can do so similarly in many other tools. And now if I make this request to my ID server admin, on port uh, 8888 slash API running, I'll be able to get all of the configuration if I include a query string called deep. And I've decided also to exclude the operational data like the uh, uptime of the various nodes in my cluster. So if I go ahead and make this request, I get back a bunch of JSON, which happens to be the entire configuration that I have loaded in my system at the moment. If I simply exclude the uh, accept header, I'll get back the default content uh, type, which is XML. And as you can see here, I have the entire configuration now in XML format and can start to do transformations on those uh, and to store those and to transfer them between different environments. I can also get subsections of the configuration. So here I have a a request where I'm uh, again accessing the same server on the same port 8888 API running but now I have a URI that includes profile slash profile and if I make this request what I'm going to get back is all of the different profile information including the ID and type. Uh, if, if you notice here I've included a query string parameter called select and this is a colon separated list of attributes within the uh, node that I'm going to retrieve. So if I actually remove this um, query string argument, I'll get back the entire configuration for that profile. So that's a way of sort of trimming the results of what it is that you get. And again, here I can change the, the content type that I get by changing uh, what it is that I accept. And that's available on, on all the different API calls. Here is an example of uh, getting the OAuth profile. So if you look here, I'm going to this, the ID server that I'm running and then on port 888 API running, profiles, profile, and then the name of my profile, which happens to be OAuth. And then I can see in there that uh, I want all of the information by specifying that query string argument deep. So now if I make this query, now I get this in XML. Uh, and this includes information or in JSON. And this includes all of the capabilities that are defined on my profile. So these are the code, implicit, client credential, introspection, and assisted, which you can see in the UI if I go to that profile on the general settings here, I have those same capabilities set up. Code flow, implicit, assisted, CC and introspection. And I also have some scopes, admin, open ID. So I see here in my profile, I have some scopes. So I have admin and um, open ID, and I can change this one uh, like we did in the other video to have a time to live. And I can add a new scope real quick. And then we can see how that comes up in the web UI. So if we just commit this change real quick, otherwise it will not be available. just change that to an acceptable value. If we don't commit this transaction, it won't be available to us in the REST API, but as soon as we do, we'll be able to see that now we have a test scope and a test time to live, and that time to live on the admin was, was updated. You can also not only read information, but you can set information. So in the sample configuration that's on the customer web, uh, the authentication service will redirect to 
any different domain. So you can see that if you go to your authentication profile and on the general section you can see here that the redirect URI is, is star. So we can change that by doing a put request to the, the API which again is on 8888 API running and then now we're going to set profiles profile and then the specific profile that we have which I named authentication and then under that we have settings authentication service redirect URLs whitelist. So if I go ahead and do this put now, that will update my um, list of whitelists with uh, whitelisted URLs, which then I can see here uh, in the REST API has changed. And if I click away from this page and click back, it will reload and I can see them here. That was what was set in the REST uh, API. I can also uh, list all of the uh, information about the URIs. Uh, this can be helpful for doing um, like bootstrapping of clients and again here you see that uh, we can provide some query string arguments. I have the uh, uh, select and I'm selecting now a path underneath of the path that I have in my uh, URI. So I'm not accessing directly authentication service endpoints but the uh, subpath of that which is endpoints URI. And so then in my response all I get back is the URI property of the endpoints. And I can change that slightly then to select not only um, that particular uh, member of the field, but I could also specify that I want information about the profile itself, like the ID and the type. And then I want the, the ID of the endpoints under that. And I do that uh, by having a, a more high level path. So my path this time is to authentication service and then I do use another select where I'm selecting the ID of the profile and the, the type of the profile and then a subpath of that which is then the endpoints endpoint ID. So if I select this then what I'm getting back is the the uh, information that I had in my select query. I can also get OAuth client information. So if I go ahead and run this, I get back the www client um, that I have defined here in my URL. So I have a path now that is to the profile and the profile's name, uh, which we've set is OAuth, and then the type and the authentication service client store config backed client named www and get all of its properties by specifying that deep uh, query string parameter. So you can see here I get the ID, the description, the secret which you notice is hashed, and the redirect URIs that are defined for that client as well as its scopes and its capabilities. So this is a great way for pulling that information into other systems that are working with your OAuth clients. I can also uh, create a client. So if you see here, now I'm, I'm not posting uh, JSON this time like in the previous example I'm posting XML and I'm doing that by specifying the content type in here to be an XML type. So in the uh, URL what I have now is I'm posting that uh, client store config backed and the XML here is defining a new client which I'm calling client test one and I'm setting its secret here to be password one. I'm specifying that the access token time to live for this client should be 300 seconds and that it should have a client uh, that is defined by this postman variable as new client. It should be able to use the OpenID connect scope and it should only have the client credential uh, capability. Not sure that this scope makes any sense though actually since that's its only capability. Let's go ahead and do that. And it says 201 created. So if we look in the uh, user interface, we should now see a new client called client1 with that admin and those properties there that we set. Interesting, if we switch over here to the CLI, you're, you can see even that uh, these changes are reflected here and it will also tell us that these changes are being made in the REST UI, uh, in the web UI and the REST API at the same time we're working in the shell. So if uh, administrators are doing changes concurrently, they'll be notified of um, changes going on and which user is making those changes. So if we look here, we can create an email provider uh, like S SMTP2 here. You can create that. It says it's created. And if we look in the admin UI, we can see, yeah, there it is. 
We can edit it right here. We can change its port. And this is interesting. So if we, as I said before, we haven't committed that. Uh, so it should be the port that it was. So let's look at that in the in the UI. So we do, or in the CLI, so we do show um, processing. And then what do we got here? No, not processing. Facilities. And then it's email providers. And then it was called SNMP, SMTP2. And his port is still 587. But now if we commit this change, it's committed there. Here it tells us that the web UI, there was changes uh, made by admin. So if we do that show again, now the port is set to 9000. And we can see that if we actually do uh, a get on the email providers. And if we just provide that deep query string parameter as well, we'll get not only the ID about it, but we'll see that the port was updated to 9000. And then if we go ahead and decide to delete that by doing a delete HTTP request, we can see that there's no content and that the result of that is that our, our email provider is gone. We have no email providers in any of the admin user interfaces. We can also do things like changing the locale by doing a put on um, environment environments localization default locale. So it's no content created, but we did a put. And we can see that reflected in the system um, here. Let's change to, to Finnish. Change it now to Swedish. There we can get that. So really, really quick introduction to the REST API and how you can use that together with the CLI and the admin UI. I also saw how you can make changes and be notified of that when those are done concurrently. Uh, by the same or different users in all of those administrative interfaces. So if you have questions on that, please feel free to leave a comment here on YouTube or drop us a line at info at Thanks.